We pull a surprise or two out of the hat in episode four that I think will really surprise you. And hopefully shock uh, the viewers. Andrea's in many ways in a bubble with her sister. We are each other's everything. Our family is most likely all gone, and it's very rare to actually have people still alive who you love. It's not his fault we were born 12 years apart. Prior to the whole world falling under the zombie apocalypse, we, we didn't have that much of a relationship. Andrea missed out on a lot of really important moments in Amy's life. There's a lot of regret and a lot of remorse and making up for lost time. Didn't Dad teach you to tie nail knots? Why would he do that? He only ever used a fisherman's knot. Our recollections of our family are very different because she had her experience and I had my experience. You were fishing for the dinner table. Not us. We always threw them back. Apparently, our father taught us completely separate ways of fishing. He knew that you needed to catch the fish and I needed to throw them back. It even bonds us even more because all of a sudden our petty differences as sisters don't really mean much anymore. We were very loved, and we, we fully realized that. Could be more than them guns. Could be your life. Glenn, worth that to you? What life I have, I owe to him. In the world of Rick Grimes, you never leave a man behind. He could have walked away, but he didn't. Neither will I. Every human being is precious. It really made sense to me that he needs to be in action all the time. Otherwise, the enormity of the situation and the world and what's happened becomes too much. You have your man, I want mine. He's the kind of guy who is trying to do the right thing, even when circumstances are against him. Let's go see Guillermo. And amongst the madness, you have this pocket of humanity. Felipe! Felipe! Let's go and try work for it. This is medicine. The old lady diffuses this standoff. Everything is flipped. There's no way to predict, um, you know, how things are going to turn out. Where are you going? I have to pee. Jeez, you try to be discreet around here. <laughs> Everybody's sitting at the campfire, and there's this moment of we've sort of forgotten where we really are. Brought a toilet paper? It's the most mundane, nothing line that you could imagine, because it's just supposed to be here's just another snapshot into the lives of these people. Yeah. I ended up playing the zombie because I knew that the bite placement and the, the performance was critical. It's a shocking, shocking moment that you watch her partially devoured right in front of us. Oh my God. Do you think everything's subsided and within the last three minutes, all hell breaks loose? <laughs> These ridiculously disgusting, horrifying zombies come out from, from nowhere. It's really, really scary. The zombies are phenomenal because they're what make this a heightened world. Shane, what do we do? Shane, follow me! It was Shane's absolute top priority to save Laurie and Carl. Come on, stay close! No! You get the sense that he's willing to let the rest of the world burn to the ground as long as the two of them are safe. I'm in pain and I'm losing blood at an alarming rate and I'm scared. Looking up in my sister's eyes, I just see how sad she is and it made me sad for her. She's stuck in this world where nothing is good and now she doesn't even have me. <laughs> this is my sister, this is my responsibility, you know, my fault. She's been trying to protect her sister and has realized that she failed. <laughs> it wasn't a monster movie moment. This was an intimate moment between two sisters. The loss of Amy is catastrophic because she's young and innocent and sweet. And I wanted to believe that there was a place for that in this world. <laughs> Literally, there's threats all around. Every human being is a threat. The zombies are a threat. The environment is a threat. Everyone is always on edge, and everyone is always searching for a leader and a way out. 